Sometimes you've got to do jobs that you simply have no interest in, like doing the dishes or looking after your son Ewan, for example, or just simply taking part in a film for nothing other than the paycheck. There are countless cases of celebs who starred in utter trash just to feed the kids and keep the private jet refueled, but for the most part they tend to keep their mouths shut when it comes to bad-mouthing the film overall. Well, that's not the case today, as the actors on this list didn't just mouth off about the scenes they didn't like, but went on record to say that they absolutely loathed them. So let's take a look at some times when actors weren't just chewing scenery, but spitting absolute poison as well. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are nine actors who hated scenes from their own movies. Number 9. Linda Hamilton Hated Terminator 2's Thumbs Up Scene During the press tour for the recently released Terminator Dark Fate, director Tim Miller stated that he actually hates one of the most iconic moments from Terminator 2, namely the climactic farewell for the T-800 who offers John Connor a thumbs up as he's lowered into the molten steel. Miller said, I can only say that that was not my favourite part of the movie. Many people love that scene. For me, it's just too sentimental. But because putting his own foot in his mouth wasn't bad enough, he then dragged star Linda Hamilton into the mess by confirming that she also agrees with him. He said, one of the first things I asked Linda is, how do you feel about the thumbs up moment? And she was like, no. And I went, okay, we're gonna be fine. How nice of him to implicate Linda as he probably watched his respect from fans evaporate like the famous Nuke City scene, also from Terminator 2. Number 8. Crispin Glover hated Back to the Future's ending Back to the Future memorably concludes with Marty McFly successfully ensuring that his parents bang and therefore make Marty actually exist. There's more to it than that, but there's the cliff notes. Marty then returns to his altered present of 1985 to see that George is now a wealthy author and a more assertive, confident person, while Lorraine is happy and healthy and his siblings are successful business owners and historical douchebag Biff has finally been put in his place. However, as great an ending as it is, not all of the film's cast were totally on board with it, with Crispin Glover confirming in recent years that he was, well, less than impressed with the film's message of money making people happy as this changes the moral of the story to wealth equals happiness. He said that the love should be the reward. And as you might expect when confronted with this information of peace and love and transcending wealth, the director absolutely went ballistic at Glover and he even speculates that this is why he was given such a low ball offer to return in the sequel and was effectively forced out of the franchise. Ouch. Number 7. Ben Affleck hated Armageddon's main plot hole Pretty much everyone who has ever watched Michael Bay's Armageddon has had the same issue with the film's core premise. A team of oil drillers are given a crash course in Astronaut 101 and sent into space to save the world from an impending asteroid. It's ridiculous. But also, it is actually ridiculous, because wouldn't it be easier to train a team of astronauts to be drillers instead? Hilariously, this was also a concern shared by star Ben Affleck, who held nothing back on the movie's commentary track where he outlines that he raised the concern to Bay himself, who simply told him to shut the f*** up. Given that this is the setup around which the rest of the movie revolves, it's a major dramatic hurdle for audiences to get over, and one that Affleck himself clearly wasn't satisfied with. Number 6. Kristen Wiig hated Bridesmaids' this diarrhea scene By far the most iconic and unforgettable scene in the 2011 hit rom-com Bridesmaids occurs when the principal characters all become stricken with food poisoning, leading to Megan stinking up the sink with explosive diarrhea. But star Kristen Wiig, who also co-wrote the film and received a Best Original Screenplay Oscar nomination for her work, didn't include the scene in the initial script, and only begrudgingly added it after, air quotes, encouragement from the studio. She said, The scene in Bridesmaids was not our idea, and it was not in the original script, and we didn't love it. It was strongly suggested for us to put it in there. I didn't want to see people shitting and puking. It actually sparked a wider debate on the role of female comedians having to act in gross-out scenes like this for a wider comic appeal, and Wig stated, When people say, oh, we're going to give more female-centered movies a chance, you're not actually reading the fine print, which is, oh, but they have to be like this. They want to see women acting like guys. And apparently, guys shit in sinks. Who knew, right? Number 5. Molly Ringwald hated The Breakfast Club's casual misogyny While John Hughes's is, 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 is The Breakfast Club is an undisputed classic of 80s coming-of-age cinema, it's not one that holds up to contemporary scrutiny, not least from those who actually appeared in the movie, such as Molly Ringwald, who actually wrote an article about The Breakfast Club and its treatment of Claire. 
She described the presentation of the character troubling and drew specific attention to several scenes where rebel John Bender harasses Claire, such as infamously peeping up her skirt. She said, as I can see now, Bender sexually harasses Claire throughout the film. When he's not sexualizing her, he takes out his rage on her with vicious contempt, calling her pathetic, mocking her as queenie. It's rejection that inspires his vitriol. Ringwald then added, It's hard for me to understand how John was able to write with so much sensitivity and also have such a glaring blind spot. How are we meant to feel about art that we both love and oppose? And you know what? She's got an incredibly valid point. Not all media ages well when examined under the lenses of today's current society. As art, it's okay to respect its legacy, but to see issues with it is also valid because it shows how we're progressing as a society. Number four, Sam Worthington hated Terminator Salvation suspiciously quiet Terminator. It's fair to say that basically nobody involved in the fourth Terminator movie, Terminator Salvation, was happy with how it turned out. But star Sam Worthington actually went into specifics about the blockbuster's failings mere months after its 2009 release. Amongst issues with the film just being plain old boring, many fans noted the absolute silliness of the gigantic harvester robot being able to sneak up on humans at the gas station. Even if you accept that it could sneak quietly, its sheer size would cause the ground to shake, right? It's pretty dumb. And hilariously, Worthington himself raised the plot hole in an interview. He said, If there was a big 10 ton robot coming outside that gas station, surely we would f***ing hear it. And I missed that, so I go, I gotta be more careful when I'm looking through my scripts. So that kind of raises my game a bit, because I feel like an idiot for not saying it to MCG. Jesus, so we've had robots getting a bashing here and the Terminator 2 thumbs up scene. Can the Terminator series catch a break? Well, with the review of Dark Fate being out? No, definitely not. <laughs> Number 3. Marion Cotillard hated her death scene in The Dark Knight Rises As thunderously entertaining as Christopher Nolan's trilogy capping The Dark Knight Rises is, the climactic death of villain Talia al Ghul was widely mocked by fans due to Cotillard's comically hammy performance. As she expires, Talia lets out some, well, stagey, over-the-top breaths and shakes her head in the same way that a child might do while pretending to die, rendering a supposedly dramatic scene absolutely comical. Now, the ferocious surrounding the scene got significant enough that the actress herself became aware of it and in an interview several years later opened up about how much she despises this scene. She said, Sometimes there are failures, and when you see this on screen you're thinking, why? Why did they keep that take? But either you blame everyone or nobody. And you can see here that the actress herself is as baffled as anyone else that a director of Nolan's exactitude would pick such a hokey take, and yet, there it is, etched in cinematic stone forevermore. Number 2. Jessica Alba hated her crying scenes in Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer Now here's the thing, no one would actually blame Jessica Alba for forgetting some of her time with the Fantastic Four, seeing as those films were at best forgettable themselves. However, there was one moment that she does seem to remember, and that was when Sue Storm had to cry in the 2007 sequel Rise of the Silver Surfer, and she remembered absolutely hating that moment. Alba said at that point that she was experiencing a clash with the director. I wanted to stop acting. The director was like, it looks too real. It looks too painful. Can you be prettier when you cry? Cry pretty, Jessica. He was like, don't do that thing with your face. Just make it flat. We can CGI the tears in. And I'm like, but there's no connection to a human being. So I just said, it, I don't care about this business anymore. As if a movie cynically adding digital tears wasn't insulting enough, dismissing a woman's performed emotional response as too ugly is absolutely foul. And number one, Holt McCowney hated how his Justice League scene was re-edited. Justice League's production was a big old mess, that much is no secret. However, as it stands right now, most of the A-list cast have kept relatively quiet about the movie and offered up only diplomatic responses. Well, thank God then for Holt, who wasn't so quiet about his disposal by Batman in the opening of the film. In a post-release interview, the actor confirmed that this scene was significantly rejigged in the editing room and ended up far away from its scripted intent. He said this, I love director Joss Whedon. My scene with Batman was originally conceived as a comedic scene. That's how Joss wrote it, and that's how we shot it. I thought it came out great, but the studio felt it would be a mistake to open the film with a completely comedic scene, so it was re-edited a little bit. I was disappointed, but when I got home to New York, I found a bottle of 
of my favorite champagne and a note from Joss that said, to battles lost, gratefully Joss. I can't tell you how much it meant to me that he took the time to write. Joss Whedon is a class act and had the letter framed. Now, given that the final version of this scene is played pretty much entirely straight, it's easy to see why he was upset with how it turned out. But at least Whedon had the good tact to give him a heads up about it before the premiere, and the champagne clearly didn't hurt either.